Hello and welcome to another short video. This time it's about how to actually uh, test old retro hardware and maybe even homebrew hardware because at the moment I was always opening up my 486 tower and pulling out the ATX power supply cord and draping out all over the floor very precariously. However, um, the other day I saw in one video from Ian Scott, who does the Picogas, that he was using something like this here, which is uh, a 3D printed test bench, basically. And I contacted the author on Mastodon and asked if they could supply me with the file, because this is currently in better. The older versions are already on Thingiverse, and I will put a link to that in the video description down below. Um, but hopefully this or next month, this thing will see a proper release. Oops, bumped the camera there. And yeah, it. I asked a friend who has a bunch of 3D printers to print one of these, and it's supposed to print even without supports. I am not a big 3D printer expert, but my friend put in a couple of uh, supports here and there to make that easier. Um, it worked out pretty nicely, I think. So the idea here is that you don't need a fully closed uh, case, basically. You take the ATX or AT power supply. I'm using an ATX power supply here because I do have the ATX to AT uh, thingy that also protects the AT style motherboards. You put it in like this. There are screw holes here to fix the thing. There's also the fan blowing through here. And then we will put in the motherboard like so. And then you can just plug in cards, etc. Um, whatever you need, basically. And you can just put it away when you don't need it anymore. So I'm gonna um, attach everything in here, find my ATX to AT uh, adapter, smart adapter with the fuses, etc., uh, which protects everything if something blows up or shorts on, on this board or on the homebrew hardware. And then uh, yeah, we'll have a look. There are, I think, also additional parts that I haven't printed yet that can attach to these cutouts. I think they are for securing the cards or something. Also on the top here there's something. Um, I have to check out the archive if there's something worthwhile to be used. <laughs> So the ATX power supply is in. Um, I must say I would have loved if these things here were a bit more sturdy. I think it's quite um, stable now because there's a big support here etc. You can also uh, put it on your table like so which is probably even better and you can just store it upright. Um, this is this is very stable. And um, I had problems getting in this screw here because uh, the slot here for the screw is a bit too low, um, but the material is a bit flexible, so that worked out nicely. So your printer really needs to be well calibrated because this is, uh, yeah, you need quite a bit of precision here. But um, other than that, I think this is pretty fine. There are some uh, feet here. Uh, you can probably also put some, some rubber feet on there for dampening or against sliding uh, on the table. And you can carry it around like this, more or less. I think that's what the idea here is. It will be harder uh, when the main board is in because then you can only grab it from this side. But yeah, it's uh, actually quite nice so far. So. Let's put in the main board and see uh, how it looks. So there we go. Um, again, a little bit of problem with the screws. 
I think this is designed so that you screw in the main board as is, due to the distance here. Uh, it has these plastic standoffs. I would have rather liked to see that um, the design uses those melt-in screw posts that you can just uh, heat up with a soldering iron and then melt into the plastic, uh, because they last much longer. So I will probably leave this board in here until it breaks. Um, because the plastic standoffs, well, you can't put in screws and take them out a lot of times. Um, also here for the uh, last screw, I needed to use a slightly shorter one and smaller one, so it first of all doesn't touch the leg of this I see. And um, for some reason, I couldn't get it quite as far in as the others. Uh, perhaps there was still a bit of support material left that I couldn't get out. Um, but yeah, it's pretty securely fastened with four screws and now we will have to wire it up using the AT X to AT smart converter which is basically um, a microcontroller that uh, yeah well um, controls all the power lines here and turns them off if there's a uh, high load or a short circuit detected, which saves these old boards from dying basically um, when there is like a failing tantalum capacitor or you test out homebrew hardware, which is still a bit buggy and has perhaps one or two short circuits on it, which I've already um, experienced myself and I have like two dead boards before I got these things. Um, I also have a video about this, uh, can probably put up a link. And then they might still be available for buying, they're not super cheap. They are open source, so you can build your own ones. The URL is here, uh, x86.fr slash atx280. And I have one in my 486, because I also put in a lot of different hardware there. But I will definitely attach it here. I think I'm going to put it maybe somewhere here or something um, not quite sure uh, one thing that is sure is I need uh, the to find the cable which belongs to this but yeah let's see so here is the assembled test bench and I cut this a little short but basically it's just putting in the main board and by the way, I needed to switch the main board because the 386 main board is not booting at the moment. So that's another repair video coming up, perhaps if we're lucky. Otherwise, it's just for salvage. But here I have this nice Texas Instruments uh, based 286 board with one megabyte of RAM, which is plenty enough for DOS games and testing uh, ancient hardware, basically. That's pretty fine. I also made a small modification. I melted in a couple of standoffs here at the side, um, which don't protrude um, through this plastic side here. But um, the standoffs are now in here and I could mount my ATX to AT smart converter here, which is pretty nice because then I have the power button here and uh, the power cable is also at a relatively sensible position. Keyboard is plugged in. Um, we have the postcard, which will tell us uh, the status of the board here. And also it has, invisible to you, a bunch of LEDs showing if the uh, voltage rails are good, etc., which is nice. Uh, I've got a cheap Trident uh, ISA video card here, a simple hard disk and floppy controller to which a GoTek is attached. Uh, this is a USB flash-based floppy emulator, which is good enough to test uh, booting DOS and maybe one or two floppy-based games. Uh, it would be nice to also add a compact flash card to this. Um, you can obviously put something in there as well. And I put in my AdLib replica card so we can hear a little bit of sound when we're testing. And that should be it. I also attached a small piezo speaker to the speaker output, obviously. The card here also has a speaker on board, um, but uh, I would need a long cable going from here to over there. 
And uh, I don't have one right now, so that's that. Okay, let's um, do the smoke test, uh, switching this on. And I'm gonna turn this a little bit so that you can see the ATX smart converter has come on. Right now it says off here. You probably can't read that and everything is to uh, zeroed. And then you can press this red button and suddenly everything comes to life. You see the post codes here. Um, the smart converter says we have 1.5 amps roughly on the 5 volts and 30 milliamps on the 12 volts, which is fine, I think. The 5 volts is a little bit low-ish, around 4.83, but I think that's still good. You heard the beep. Uh, postcode is also looking good. Um, yeah, and the whole thing is actually booting. Uh, which you can't see because it happens off screen, but we will have a short look at uh, running a game off of this thing, uh, Space Quest 3, because that runs very well from floppies. But I must say, this looks actually pretty decent. Um, I think I will put it somewhere more nicely. At the moment, it's on my rubber mat here, but uh, basically you can fetch it from the um, cupboard or wherever you store that, put it on the table, run some things. Uh, also, I attached a, an external battery. This is an 18.5 something lithium battery, rechargeable, attached to the external battery connector. Uh, make sure to check which side is uh, ground. It's uh, This will help uh, in maintaining the BIOS settings, otherwise you will have to do it all over again every time you unplug the computer. So this is much nicer. And it fits here very nicely. Not sure what is coming here in terms of additional stuff that you can put here, but I think that's a good uh, place. I attach it with double-sided tape so it's easy to remove. Yeah, um, I think I like this. I think this is much better than having everything floating around precariously. Um, yeah, and you can put it very simply aside if you need to. Uh, attaching this thing on the side here obviously makes it a bit harder to, um, or impossible, to turn this uh, 90 degrees to the left. But I think I won't do that anyway, because I think I like to have the cards in like that, because they are, of course, not really secured. They're just put in here for uh, testing. And I think I like to have it like this and I can also read the postcard much better. Yeah, that's it um, for this short-ish video. Uh, I hope you liked it. Please leave a comment. How do you test your retro stuff on your desk or wherever you're working on this? And uh, share, like and subscribe. You can also support me on Patreon. That is uh, very appreciated. And if you don't want to invest any monthly sum you can also send me a coffee via ko-fi.com links in the description or paypal or you can also do it via um, youtube but that's it let's fire up space quest to see if this thing is actually running but i guess so and then see you in the next video